Did you know that rejection might just be the best thing that ever happened to you? Most of us try to avoid it at all costs. But what if I told you that facing rejection head-on is actually one of the most powerful tools for personal growth and success? It's a concept that goes against everything we've been taught, but in reality, rejection is not the end of the road. It's often the beginning of a new, stronger version of ourselves. If you want to master your emotions, build resilience, and become the kind of person who turns every setback into a comeback, you need to change how you think about rejection. In this video, we're going to dive deep into how rejection can shape you into a more powerful, determined, and self-aware individual. So, avoid this common myth. Rejection means failure. The truth is, rejection is merely a stepping stone on your journey toward greatness. Stick with me, and I'll show you how embracing rejection with the right mindset can transform your life in ways you never thought possible. Let's get started. Number one, the power of shared experiences, connecting through rejection. Have you ever experienced rejection in a social setting? Maybe it was an invitation you never received, a friendship that never blossomed, or a moment when you felt overlooked. Initially, it stings, doesn't it? That feeling of being cast aside, like you're not even seen. But before you let that discomfort define the situation, imagine something different for a second. Imagine walking away from that moment of rejection with something far more valuable than validation, a deeper connection with the people who truly see you for who you are. Rejection often feels like a door slamming in your face. It's easy to feel that rush of loneliness, frustration, or even bitterness. But here's a shift in perspective. Rejection can also be an invitation to connect more authentically with others. Think back to a time when you faced a setback or felt ignored. How did you bounce back? If you're like most of us, it was through sharing an experience. Whether it was a challenging moment with a friend or a hobby that helped you regain your focus. Those shared experiences create a sense of camaraderie that transcends the sting of rejection. They remind us that we are never truly alone in our struggles. In those moments of adversity, something incredible happens. A tribe forms, and not just any tribe, a tribe that thrives on vulnerability, understanding, and resilience. This group, whether they are friends, family, or even strangers you meet along the way, becomes an anchor a reminder that rejection is not the end of the road, but a crossroads leading you towards something bigger. Perhaps it's the laughter shared during a late-night conversation after a rough day, or the warmth of a simple meal with someone who genuinely listens. These are the moments that reaffirm your place in the world, and you start to realize that rejection doesn't diminish your value. It clarifies it. It helps you focus on those who truly resonate with you, not those who are blind to your worth. Reflecting back on this, doesn't it feel comforting to know that through the hardships and the times when you felt rejected, you found your real connections? These are the people who've been with you in your lowest moments and have celebrated with you in your highest. They've heard your struggles, shared in your triumphs, and laughed with you along the way. Number two, embrace the unknown. Transform rejection into opportunity. Rejection often feels like a closed door, right? It's natural to feel that way at first, especially when the world seems to say no to something you've put your heart and soul into. But what if I told you that behind every no is a doorway leading to something unexpected, something that could change your life in ways you never imagined? How different would your response to rejection be if you saw it as an invitation to explore the unknown. In those first moments of rejection, it's easy to fall into the trap of disappointment. Maybe you've been turned down for a job, faced a relationship that didn't work out, or found yourself rejected by a group of people you thought would welcome you with open arms. The pain is real. The frustration is palpable. 
But the key here is to not let rejection define your future. Instead, use it as a catalyst for growth, a springboard for something greater. Look at the vast unknown that lies ahead. The world is full of experiences waiting for you to dive in. When we experience rejection, it can feel like we're stuck in a rut. But that's just a perception, one that only holds us back if we allow it. Rejection can free you. It can give you the chance to venture into new terrain. Think about it. Have you ever tried a cuisine you've never tasted? Or visited a neighborhood you've never explored? Those new experiences aren't just distractions, they are rich opportunities for personal growth. With every new experience, you add another layer to your character. Another layer that makes you more adaptable, more resilient, more empathetic. These experiences shape you into someone who can handle life's curveballs with grace and poise. Do you remember the first time you stepped out of your comfort zone? Maybe it was traveling to a new place, taking on a challenge that terrified you, or doing something that pushed your limits. That feeling of stepping into the unknown can be both exhilarating and nerve-wracking. But in hindsight, those moments often become the highlights of our lives. The memories you create from those new experiences shape the way you see the world, and more importantly, how you see yourself. The challenges become less intimidating, and you begin to realize that every rejection, every no, is simply the world nudging you towards something more aligned with your true path. Now, let's think about how we can use rejection as a stepping stone to something greater, Imagine facing rejection and choosing to view it as a redirection. Instead of letting it discourage you, let it inspire you to dive deeper into what's possible. Perhaps you'll decide to take a class in something you've always been curious about, or pick up a hobby you've long ignored. Rejection forces us to be creative, to push our limits, to take risks. And when you begin to look at rejection as an opportunity, it transforms into a force of empowerment. The goal isn't to forget the rejection, it's to grow from it. It's about turning every no into a stepping stone toward a richer, more vibrant life. When you embrace the unknown, you're not just fighting against rejection, you're leaping into the life you're meant to create. You see, when rejection closes one door, it opens a thousand others, ones you never would have found if you hadn't been brave enough to step forward. And with each new door, you grow, you expand, you become more capable of navigating the challenges life throws your way. So the next time you face rejection, don't see it as the end. See it as an invitation to explore, to discover, to embrace the unknown. Because that's where the real magic happens. Number three, Building your social status through self-improvement. Imagine yourself walking into a room. At first glance, you might feel invisible. There's a crowd of people laughing, chatting and having fun while you stand there, unnoticed, maybe even ignored. It's easy to get discouraged in those moments, right? To feel like you're on the outside looking in. But here's a secret those moments of being overlooked hold a hidden opportunity. This is your chance to build something far more powerful than social validation. It's your opportunity to focus on yourself and create a social status that comes not from external approval, but from your own growth. It's easy to fall into the trap of seeking validation from others. We all crave recognition and that desire to be seen and appreciated is human. But Stoicism teaches us a different approach. Instead of chasing after approval, we focus on self-improvement and building our own personal growth. You see, the true power in social status doesn't lie in how many people acknowledge you. It lies in how much you've invested in becoming the best version of yourself. Think about it. When you focus on your own self-development, you naturally begin to attract people who resonate with your energy. This isn't about putting on a show or performing for the crowd. It's about living authentically and aligning your actions with your values. 
whether it's advancing in your career, improving your physical fitness, or diving deep into a hobby that fulfills you, these activities aren't just tasks. They are tools that help you carve out a stronger, more resilient version of yourself. Let me take you back to a time when you achieved something on your own. Maybe it was a personal goal you reached, like hitting a fitness milestone, mastering a skill, or overcoming a personal challenge. How did it feel when you looked at what you accomplished? The satisfaction wasn't just from the achievement itself, but from knowing that you put in the work, the effort, the focus. And that's the real power of building your social status from within. When you focus on enhancing yourself, your life naturally starts to shift. You begin to attract others who share your passions and values. It's not about climbing a social ladder. Instead, it's about climbing your own ladder of self-development. And when you do this, your interactions with others change. You stop seeking validation from the outside and start finding fulfillment in the connections you create based on shared experiences and genuine mutual respect. Whether it's a quiet conversation with someone who shares your vision or a group that values the effort you've put into your personal growth, your social circle becomes a reflection of the best version of yourself. This is how social status is built, not through popularity contests, but through the authentic, unshakable foundation of self-improvement. As you continue to invest in your growth, the world around you will begin to take notice, not because you've changed your appearance or started chasing after the next trend, but because you've become someone who others can trust rely on and admire for the real substance you bring into their lives. It's a status that can't be bought. It's a status earned by constantly striving to improve yourself and share your wisdom, kindness and integrity with those around you. Number four, turning rejection into personal growth and community engagement. Rejection, it's a word we all know too well. Whether it's in our personal lives, professional settings or creative pursuits, we've all felt the sting of being turned down. At first, it can feel like the world is shutting a door in your face, and it's okay to feel that initial rush of disappointment, even anger. But what if I told you that rejection could become one of your greatest assets? Imagine turning that rejection into fuel for your personal growth and engaging more deeply with your community. Sounds counterintuitive, doesn't it? But let me explain how this works. In those moments when you're faced with rejection, it's easy to slip into the trap of self-doubt. You question your worth. You think, what did I do wrong? Why wasn't I good enough? But here's where the shift happens. Rejection is not an end. It's a moment in time, a small part of the grander narrative of your life. Instead of letting it paralyze you, use it as an opportunity to grow. What can you learn from the experience? How can it teach you more about yourself? The answers may not come right away, but with time and reflection, you will begin to understand that rejection is simply a tool for transformation. It gives you the space to reassess, to learn and to improve. Personal growth happens in the most unexpected places. It's in the tough moments, the struggles, the failures and yes, even rejection. The key is how you respond. Instead of retreating into isolation, use this opportunity to push forward. Consider this, what if you took the lessons from rejection and channeled them into helping others? There's immense power in community engagement, especially when we've been humbled by our own experiences. When you share your story of rejection, it creates a connection. It shows others that they are not alone. This is where the magic happens. By embracing your own growth and opening yourself up, you allow others to do the same. When you engage with your community after a rejection, you can foster an environment of mutual support and understanding. Whether it's offering mentorship, volunteering, or simply being a listening ear to someone else's struggles, you become a beacon of resilience. Your rejection is no longer just a personal failure. 
it becomes part of the collective experience of overcoming adversity. And in doing so, you not only grow, but also help others grow. So, the next time you face rejection, remember this, it's not the end of your story. It's the beginning of a new chapter where you can turn your pain into growth and your isolation into meaningful connection. Personal growth and community engagement are intertwined and rejection is the catalyst that can propel you forward in both. Instead of retreating, lean into the discomfort. Number five, responding to indifference. Focus on your own journey. There's a particular kind of pain that comes from indifference. It's not the sharp sting of rejection, but the slow burn of being unnoticed, unacknowledged or ignored. You've probably experienced it. The feeling that no one cares enough to even react, whether it's in a conversation, a workplace scenario, or even in your personal life. You've put in the effort, yet it feels like you're invisible. At first, this indifference can feel like a crushing blow to your confidence and self-worth. But here's a truth that might surprise you. The key to responding to indifference is not in changing how others perceive you, but in focusing entirely on your own journey. Let's pause for a moment and think about it. When people are indifferent toward you, it's easy to fall into the trap of seeking validation or approval. You might find yourself wondering why people don't care or why you aren't getting the recognition you deserve. But in the grand scheme of things, external validation is fleeting. The approval of others, while nice, is not what defines your worth or success. What truly matters is your internal compass, your own journey of growth and development. Think about the last time you felt truly proud of something you achieved on your own, something that was entirely about you and for you. Maybe it was completing a project, learning a new skill, or simply overcoming an obstacle. In those moments, did the opinions of others even matter? The pride you felt was grounded in your own effort, in your own growth. This is the essence of focusing on your journey. When you place your energy on self-improvement and growth, the indifference of others becomes less significant. You start to realize that their lack of recognition doesn't diminish your value. In fact, it can be a catalyst for you to keep pushing forward, to stay focused on the path you're creating for yourself. Responding to indifference requires a shift in perspective. Instead of questioning why people aren't acknowledging you, ask yourself, Am I acknowledging myself? It's time to start celebrating your victories, no matter how small they may seem. When you invest in your own growth and focus on your personal journey, the indifference of others fades into the background. What others think no longer has the power to determine your worth. By focusing on your journey, you become the one who sets the tone for your life. You get to define your own success and take pride in your progress, regardless of how others perceive it. And over time, something incredible happens. Your confidence builds, your self-esteem soars, and you attract the right people into your life, people who see you for who you truly are. When you stop chasing validation and start focusing on your journey, the world begins to notice, not because you're seeking attention, but because you're radiating authenticity. So the next time you're met with indifference, don't let it get to you. Instead, turn inward. Stay true to your path and let the journey itself be the reward. Number six, the silent response. Using silence for self-reflection. In a world that often values constant noise and activity, silence is a rare commodity. Yet, silence holds a unique power a power that allows us to tune in to ourselves, to reflect on our thoughts and emotions, and to reconnect with our core. When faced with rejection or difficult emotions, our instinct is often to respond, to speak out, to explain ourselves. But what if I told you that sometimes the most powerful response is no response at all? Silence isn't about avoiding the situation or running away from discomfort. It's about creating space for introspection. Think about it. When was the last time you truly paused, took
took a step back and listened to your inner voice. Silence gives you the chance to reflect without the noise of external opinions, judgments or expectations. It allows you to process your emotions, to understand where they're coming from and to decide how you want to respond, not from a place of reaction, but from a place of clarity. The Stoics often spoke about the importance of detaching from our immediate reactions, especially in the face of adversity. Marcus Aurelius, for example, believed that silence and self-reflection were tools that helped him maintain composure and focus, even during times of personal turmoil. By taking a step back and choosing silence, you can avoid the traps of anger, frustration or regret. It's a space where you can regain your sense of control, understand your emotions and decide how you want to move forward. In moments of rejection, indifference or conflict, silence gives you the opportunity to respond with intention instead of firing off a reaction, pause. Give yourself permission to process your feelings, reflect on what happened, why it happened and what you can learn from it. By taking this moment to yourself, you prevent knee-jerk reactions that might lead to regret later. Silence isn't weakness, it's a powerful tool for emotional mastery. This practice of using silence for self-reflection isn't about shutting people out. It's about honoring your own need for space and clarity. It's in these moments of quiet introspection that you find the answers you're seeking. You learn to trust yourself, to listen to your inner voice, and to respond not out of emotion, but from a place of calm understanding. So the next time you're faced with rejection or emotional turmoil, remember this silence isn't a void. It's a sacred space for self-reflection, growth and inner peace. Number 7. Maintaining Self-Worth Without seeking external validation, it's easy to feel on top of the world when others are praising you, when your achievements are noticed and celebrated. For many of us, Validation from others is like a fuel that keeps us moving forward. But what happens when the praise stops or when we feel unnoticed? Does our worth suddenly vanish? Is our identity completely tied to what others think of us? These questions can be unsettling, but they also reveal a deep truth. Real self-worth doesn't come from outside sources. It has to come from within. When we live our lives based on the approval of others, we constantly find ourselves chasing after that next compliment, that next recognition. This can create a cycle of dependence where our happiness is reliant on how others perceive us. But think about it. What if we stopped seeking that external validation? What if we could find our worth independent of how the world sees us? The path to true self-worth is about recognizing that your value is inherent, not dependent on accolades, likes or praise. It's about learning to appreciate yourself for who you are, your qualities, your actions and your intentions. This doesn't mean rejecting compliments or kindness from others, but it means not hinging your self-esteem on them. It's about realizing that you are valuable, not because others see it, but because you acknowledge it within yourself. Many of us grew up in environments that emphasized the importance of external validation. From grades in school to praise from family or peers, we were conditioned to measure our worth based on outside recognition. But as we grow older, we start to realize that these external sources of validation are fleeting. Praise may feel good in the moment, but it doesn't define who we are. The true measure of self-worth is found in how we see ourselves when no one else is looking. This internal validation comes from deep self-reflection and personal growth. When you focus on improving yourself for your own benefit, not for the approval of others, you build a foundation of self-esteem that can't be shaken by external forces. It's about cultivating self-compassion and recognizing your worth regardless of what others think or say. By doing this, you empower yourself to live authentically without being swayed by the opinions of others. Number 8. 
Kindness with emotional distance, protecting your inner peace. In a world that demands so much from us, emotionally, mentally and physically, it's easy to become drained by the constant pull of others' needs and demands. We all want to be kind, to help, to show empathy. But how do we balance our kindness without sacrificing our own well-being? How do we show up for others without losing ourselves in the process? The answer lies in emotional distance, kindness with boundaries. At first glance, it may seem contradictory to suggest that kindness and emotional distance can go hand in hand. After all, how can you be kind if you're not fully giving yourself to others? But here's the thing. True kindness doesn't mean losing yourself in someone else's struggles. It means being able to offer help, love and compassion, while also maintaining a sense of inner peace and self-respect. Emotional distance doesn't mean being cold or indifferent. It simply means recognizing where your emotional limits are and not allowing others to cross them. When you're kind to others, you should also be kind to yourself. This means setting boundaries both in your interactions with others and within your own heart. By maintaining emotional distance, you protect your peace and in turn, you're better able to serve and care for those around you. Think about how often we put the needs of others above our own, sometimes to the detriment of our emotional and mental health. We give and give until we're empty, wondering why we feel so drained. True kindness doesn't demand that we deplete ourselves. It simply asks that we offer what we can without losing sight of our own well-being. This is where emotional distance comes into play. It's not about shutting people out or becoming callous. It's about recognizing that you have a finite amount of emotional energy and you must preserve it for yourself in order to truly be there for others. Number nine, the strength of composure. Don't reveal your struggles. There's something incredibly powerful about composure. It's the ability to remain calm, collected, and poised in the face of adversity. It's the strength to endure without breaking, to carry yourself with dignity no matter what life throws at you. But what happens when you're struggling, when you feel like your world is falling apart? Should you hide your pain or should you let it show? The answer lies in the power of composure. At first, composure might seem like something only the strong or stoic can maintain. After all, when you're dealing with stress, hardship or emotional turmoil, it can feel impossible to keep a calm demeanor. But composure isn't about suppressing your emotions or pretending that everything is fine when it's not. It's about choosing how you respond to those emotions. It's about taking a deep breath, finding your center and holding your ground, even when the world seems chaotic. Imagine facing a difficult situation, whether it's a personal setback, a professional challenge, or even a conflict with someone close to you. The temptation might be to react, either by lashing out, withdrawing, or letting your emotions take over. But composure is about pausing before reacting. It's about taking a step back, assessing the situation, and then deciding how you want to respond not from a place of fear, anger or frustration, but from a place of control. This kind of strength doesn't come from hiding your struggles. It comes from acknowledging them and then choosing to respond with grace. It's about showing up in your toughest moments, not with perfection, but with resilience. It's about recognizing that even in moments of hardship, you have the power to control your response to maintain your dignity and to navigate the storm without losing yourself in the process. By cultivating composure, you also give yourself the gift of emotional clarity. Instead of getting swept up in the chaos of your feelings, you create space for rational thought and thoughtful action. This doesn't mean suppressing your pain or pretending that everything is okay. It means showing strength in how you manage your emotions and how you move forward, even when life is difficult. 
When you embrace composure, you discover a strength that comes not from avoiding challenges, but from facing them head on with resilience. You learn that the greatest power lies in your ability to remain steadfast, no matter what life throws your way. Number 10. Stoic wisdom in action, turning rejection into resilience. Rejection can feel like a blow to the soul. It's not just the sting of being told no, it's the challenge to your sense of self-worth, your identity, your confidence. But what if rejection didn't have to break you? What if it could be a stepping stone to something greater? This is where Stoic wisdom comes in. The Stoics teach us that external events, such as rejection, are beyond our control. What we can control, however, is how we respond. In moments of rejection, instead of allowing ourselves to spiral into frustration or self-doubt, we can use the tools of Stoic philosophy to transform these moments into opportunities for growth and resilience. One of the core Stoic principles is the idea of focusing only on what is within our control. Rejection, whether in love, work or personal pursuits, is an external event that is not a reflection of our worth. It's simply a part of life. What we can control is our attitude toward rejection and our response to it. Instead of allowing it to define us, we can use it to fuel our personal development. Think of it this way, every rejection is a lesson. It's an opportunity to refine our character, to become stronger, and to prove to ourselves that we can withstand adversity. By embracing this perspective, we take the power away from rejection. It no longer holds the same weight over us. Instead of viewing it as a setback, we start to see it as part of the journey, a necessary step on the path to greater success. By adopting Stoic principles, we learn to separate our emotions from external events. When we stop attaching our self-worth to the approval or rejection of others, we free ourselves from the weight of these experiences. We develop resilience, not by avoiding rejection, but by learning how to rise from it stronger than before. Rejection becomes just another challenge to overcome, a lesson, not a defeat. By applying Stoic wisdom, we turn each rejection into an opportunity to grow, to refine our character and to build resilience that will serve us in every area of life. Number 11. How rejection can lead to greater self-discovery. Rejection often feels like an end, a moment where our dreams are crushed and we're left questioning our path. But what if rejection is not the end, but the beginning of something more profound? What if it's a catalyst for greater self-discovery? When we face rejection, it's easy to feel like we've been derailed, like we've missed an opportunity, or worse, that we're not good enough. But in those moments of rejection, we also have a unique opportunity to look inward and ask ourselves important questions. What do we truly want? What are our core values? What is the deeper meaning behind this rejection? And how can we use it to refine our goals and aspirations? Rejection challenges us to reflect on who we are and what we truly want out of life. It forces us to take a step back and reassess our direction. Are we pursuing something because it aligns with our true self? Or are we simply chasing external approval? Are we being true to our core values? Or are we compromising for the sake of success or acceptance? In these moments of introspection, we often discover more about ourselves than we ever could in moments of success or approval. Rejection has the power to strip away the superficial and reveal what really matters to us. It pushes us to be authentic, to pursue what genuinely resonates with us, and to let go of what no longer serves our purpose. By embracing rejection as a tool for self-discovery, we not only learn more about ourselves, but also become stronger and more resilient. We realize that our worth isn't tied to external validation. It comes from within. We start to see rejection not as a setback, but as a stepping stone toward greater self-awareness, clarity, and purpose. 
Number 12. Using Reverse Psychology. Transforming Rejection into Success. Sometimes the best way to turn rejection into success is by using reverse psychology, not on others, but on ourselves. Rejection can be disheartening, but what if we intentionally use it to fuel our drive for success? When we face rejection, it's easy to become discouraged and lose momentum. But what if we flipped the script? What if we viewed rejection as a sign that we're on the right track? Instead of letting rejection defeat us, we can use it as fuel to prove to ourselves and the world that we won't be deterred. Reverse psychology in this sense becomes a tool for self-motivation. Instead of letting rejection dictate our actions, we let it push us further. By embracing the challenge of overcoming rejection, we take the power back into our hands. We show ourselves that rejection is just another obstacle to overcome and we're capable of achieving greatness despite it. This mindset shift allows us to see rejection not as an ending, but as an invitation to rise higher. With each rejection, we get closer to success. Number 13. Applying Stoic Resilience in Your Daily Life Stoic resilience is about more than just surviving life's challenges. It's about thriving in the face of adversity. It's the practice of using Stoic principles to build an unshakable foundation of mental and emotional strength, regardless of what life throws at you. In daily life, Stoic resilience begins with understanding what's within our control and what's not. We can't control the weather, the actions of others, or many of the circumstances we face. But what we can control is our response. By focusing on our own attitudes, actions and thoughts, we take back our power and refuse to let external events dictate our inner peace. Stoic resilience isn't about avoiding difficulty, it's about learning how to face it with courage, calm and wisdom. It's about accepting that challenges are inevitable and using them as opportunities for growth. When we apply Stoic principles in our daily lives, we begin to view challenges not as threats, but as stepping stones to greater strength. Resilience isn't something we're born with, it's something we cultivate through practice. By applying Stoic wisdom daily, we develop the mental fortitude to endure hardship without breaking we learn to stay true to our values and our path, even when faced with adversity. Incorporating stoic resilience into our daily routines involves embracing challenges with gratitude, practicing mindfulness, and focusing on the present moment. We learn to stay calm, centered, and focused, no matter what comes our way. And as we build this resilience, we discover that we are capable of much more than we ever thought possible. You've made it to the end. Drop a hundred if you've watched this far. This shows you're part of the 0.01% who actually finished what they start. If you're serious about transforming your life, don't just stop here. Make sure to subscribe to our channel because we're just getting started with content that will help you become the best version of yourself. Remember, rejection is not the end. It's a powerful tool for personal growth. Keep applying the lessons from today and watch how your life starts shifting toward a path of greater resilience, success and inner strength. You have everything it takes to turn setbacks into comebacks. Now, let's go make it happen.